A lot of backlash and responses to President Trump's announcement that transgender people will be banned from the military. Hello, everybody. I'm Bruce Johnson. Welcome to Off Script. U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff said today there will be no change in trans policy until they receive official guidance from the president. And tweets don't count. The U.S. Navy says transgender sailors can still serve and get medical treatment until further notice. Most Republicans at the Capitol tried to avoid reacting to the announcement altogether. But House Speaker Paul Ryan, he had this to say today. The problem here or the concern here in the House was whether or not the military will be forced to pay for these surgical procedures. I share those concerns. Uh Last night, uh, after the off-script broadcast, I was able to chat with Kristen Beck here on the set. She's a 20-year Navy veteran serving with the elite Navy SEALs for much of that time. Kristen Beck is transgender, and she has a message for President Trump. You're going to tell me face-to-face -face I'm not worthy, and you're going to tell me I can't serve? Well, I did serve, and there's been transgender people serving for, you know, since the Revolutionary War. You know, we serve with honor. We serve with dignity and respect. I mean, we can serve. We're capable. So you're telling me that I'm not worthy, you're gonna sit there face to face? I don't think you would even, I don't think you would do it. Okay. Something else is going on. You, you were in the Navy for how long? I was in the Navy SEALs for 20 years. Uh, you were not out? I you, was not out. You, you were not well, out? to a few people. Well, well okay, but, but, but what was that like? A Navy SEAL, oh, okay, for, for 20 years, you know, uh, pretending to be something that, that you weren't, other than a, a, a military, you know, uh, a yeah. person. Well, the thing is, is I, I wasn't really making believe I was something else. I wasn't living some other life or something. I've always been this since I was born. So maybe it won't be as visible on the surface, or maybe it won't be, you know, right in your face. But this is me, and I've always been this. And a lot of my friends that see me right now, they just kind of start laughing. We're sitting there shooting the guns, or we're fighting, doing some UFC stuff. So they're just, hey, you haven't changed a bit. Right. So, 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 so your friends, you, you, you know, your, your, your brothers in arms, they always knew who you were. Oh, a few of them did. I mean, and when they see me right now, they just say I haven't changed. Right. So when I haven't changed, right. I'm still the same person. What would you say to the president uh, uh, about those who are still on active duty? You know, because it wasn't clear today on what he wants to happen. To, yeah. to, There's a lot more questions than there are answers. He was not clear at all. I mean, how can you be clear on a tweet? So we need to have a press conference. We need to have something out there. The president doesn't do, policy. Pre he doesn't do press conference. I know, I heard that. Okay, so, so but, what do you need? What, what do you need from this well, president? Well, you have to sit down with the folks at the Pentagon and actually put out some policy. And, and we work off policy. So if it comes out as policy, and this is what happens, the commander-in-chief talks to the Pentagon, the Pentagon all meets up, they write the policies out, and then those get passed down to the branches. Now, when the branch comes out and they say, tell me, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guard, if the branch comes out and says, this is the rule, this is the policy, this is the rule of the law, we're going to follow it. We're going to do the best we can. But in 2018, midterms, vote. In 2020, we're going to vote, and we're going to have some more changes. So it's going to keep going back and forth, back and forth. We need Congress. We need people to sit down. We need to make some laws. We need the real, what's the message the real of, laws. What's the message to a, uh, transgender uh, individuals who are not interested in military careers, but they still hear this, more rejection, okay? It's all need rejection. Need not apply. What, what, what is the message? What does that do? It's a terrible message. It means we're not worthy. It means we're substandard. It means we're subhuman. It means we're going to be relegated to always the back, and, and it's, it's a terrible message. I'm about America. I'm about liberty. I'm about freedom. It's for every individual. It's for you. It's for me. It's for everyone in this room. So it, it's about liberty. I'm going to fight for liberty. Speak for the transgender individuals who, yes. who cannot come on television, you know, who are, who are not well known. You know, what, what is it like being transgender, you know, in the, the, this country now? You know, well, when are your best days? When are your worst days, your worst moments? Well, I mean, I, this is day to day. This is me just living. And I live on a farm right now. I'm raising cattle. I have horses, some chickens. I live check to check. I'm, I'm, it's a tough life. So when you go out in public, people are, uh, they're dissing you constantly. There's always comments. There's always looks. You're judged. Constantly judged. Constantly judged. And it's just tiring. Yeah. And so after a while, I mean, the straw on a camel's back, sometimes we just break. And that's the problem is, uh, it's not me. There's nothing wrong with me. But the way society treats me, the way everybody keeps looking at me, the way I'm judged constantly, is sometimes it gets, it gets pretty harsh. Right. It all builds up. And, and when are the best times? When are the times when you're most comfortable? So the best times I'm most comfortable is just me and my wife, and we're just sitting at the farm, and we're having our coffee in the morning, and I'm just me. Mm -hmm. You know, I just need some peace and quiet. Right. Everybody just leave me alone. Uh, the president, when, when, when he says that uh, 
transgender people c cannot serve. He, he said, you know, they're, they're not fit for the military. He talks about the, the medical costs. Mm -hmm. uh, he, yeah. he talks about we need to be focused on yes. winning. Okay, yeah. like, how do you respond to that? Just this cost is not the problem. Cost is not the issue. How about telling us the truth? What is the truth? What is the issue? The truth is you have a bunch of people out there that, that are hateful. They're all bigoted. They have prejudice. And they're all based on like Bible and religion and some other stuff. They're based on a bunch of misinformation and things that they're just, they're just talking about and beating their chest and saying this and this and this and this. They don't want to tell the truth. So they say cost. Tell me the truth. Hey, President Trump, tell me the truth. You know, Sessions and, you know, Mr. Pence, everyone else, tell me the truth. What's your real problem? And sit there face to face and we'll have a talk. And the talk is really going to be an honest talk like we're doing right now. Right. And if you can sit there and I, we can go out on a shooting range, we can go UFC, we can do whatever you want. I'm going to show you my capabilities. My capabilities are awesome. I'm a great soldier. And you're not going to tell me anything different because I did it. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just say, hey, I'm still here. I'm capable. You're going to lose a lot of folks. And there's a lot of people out there that have multiple languages and all kinds of skills. You're going to dismiss all of us. Okay. You're losing the war. Thanks a lot. Good talking <laughs> to you.